Okay, so we've already gone over basic frequency tables. I did it with a tally chart, but as you saw in the questions, you can have it with a tally or without a tally. And we worked out how to work out the mean and the mode and the median from those. Now we're going to look at what we call a grouped frequency table. Now these probably you see a lot more often. So let's do our example of how far people travel. So this time we're working for a cinema and we're seeing how far people travel to come to our cinema. So we've got distance. Okay? And we've got the frequency. Exactly the same as we did last time. But now we're going to have a distance of between naught and two miles. So it's greater than zero, but less than or equal to two. So that's for our first one. Then we're going to have naught. Sorry, between two. Sorry, let me run that off. Now we're going to have between two and five. Okay? Then we're going to have between five and eight. And then we're going to have between eight and fifteen. And then we have between 15 and 30, because that's the furthest anyone comes away from. Okay? So the range, the, the difference in the two values doesn't have to be the same in each one. And then we've got our frequency. So our frequency in this case, there was 15 people came that sort of distance, 23 came that far. 12 came that far, 15 again came that far, and only 5 came that distance. Okay, so the modal value again, the modal range, the modal distance is just this one, the one with the most in it. So the modal value is just between 2 and 5. So equals less than, greater than two, less than five. We can't say any more specifically than that, because that's all we know. The median again, we just need to add them all up, so we've got 30, it's 50, so we've got 85 people in total here. Okay, so the middle value of 85, divided 85 by two is gonna be 42 and a half, so 43rd value is gonna equal the median. So where's that going to fall? 15 plus 23 gives us 38. So actually, the median value is going to be somewhere in here. Okay, so the median value is going to be in there. I should change the side I've written that one. So I'll just put modal. And let's put median. Because the median falls within this category. Okay? So... We need, we're then told in the question that we need to estimate. Estimate the mean. And remember, for the mean, we have to add up all our results and divide them by however many there are. Now, to do that here is we can't do that because we don't know exactly what the results were. So what we're going to do is we make an estimation. And in order to do an estimation, we're going to have to add on essentially two columns. Really, just the one column, really. And this column we're going to call midpoint. Okay? So we're going to assume that when someone says they walk between 0 and 2 miles, they actually walk a mile. Because, yes, some of them will walk half a mile, some of them will walk one and a half. But you can just assume that most of them will walk around about a mile. So you take the midpoint of all of these. So the midpoint of two and five. Well, that's a difference of, of three. So the midpoint's going to be one and a half between them. So it's actually the midpoint here is going to be 3.5. Midpoint between five and eight. Again, the dis difference is, is three. So the 
it's actually going to be 6.5, isn't it? The difference between 8 and 15, okay, the difference is 7. So it's going to be 3.5 between them. So it's going to be 11.5. Okay, and the midpoint between 15 and 30, again, 15 difference, it's going to be 22. Point five, seven and a half away from either number. Okay, so now what we need to do, we do frequency times the midpoint. Same as we did for our normal frequency tables. We just do however many there were times by the number of result, sorry, the distance times by how many results there were for that distance. So now that's what we do. So we get, here we get 15. Use my calculator for the rest. 23 times 3.5, 80.5, 12 times 6.5, 78, 11.5 times 15, 172.5. And 22.5 times 5 gives us 112.5. Okay, now we need to total them. So we do 15, add 80.5, add 78, add 172.5, add 112.5. We get our answer is 4, 5, 8. And now to find the mean, we do 458.5 divided by how many there were. So, how many were there? There was 15 plus 23 plus 12 plus 15 plus 5, there's 70 people. So, we do 4. 58.5 divided by 70 gives us the average. The estimate for the mean is 6.6 .6 miles. And that is all we do. So pretty much the same as we were doing before. The only extra step we've got is we need to work out this thing called the midpoint. Okay. There are going to be some questions on that, but I just want to have a look at something else first. I'll have a look at ways of representing this data. Okay? Different ways of representing this data and other different things we have as well. Okay, so now we're going to look at different ways of presenting data. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this. There's what is called a community frequency diagram and there are histograms. And they're the main way we look, tend to look at data at GCSE level. You might find with some of the things, you'll never ever see them again afterwards, but we need to know how to do them now. So, first off, cumulative frequency diagram. Now these are very straightforward. So we've got our data laid out in our table here with our range of values that we could possibly have for our height and the number of people that we actually have that actually have those heights in our class. So again very similar to our distance to the cinema one except now we're having a range of heights and how many people have it. Now with community frequency it's very straightforward. We literally so this is the the com, this is the community frequency, okay, and this is the height down here. Frequency always goes up the y-axis, always, always, always. Okay, so with community frequency, we look, how many people have between 110 and 120, how many people have it? Eight. So we actually just go to 120 and we mark off eight. Right, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but whenever always do a horizontal and vertical cross, not a diagonal cross, or marking on a graph. Because what you're actually doing is marking off the 
y direction and the x direction. Sorry, the x direction, the x one and the y one. It's where they cross. So it should be a horizontal cross. Much, much better. So then we look how many have it between 120 and 140. Well, 8 plus 12. We're going to add together each one. So we're communicating, if that even is a word. We're adding together. It's cumulative. It's everything together. So 8 plus 12 is 20. So when we go to 140, we go all the way up to 20. Okay. And then we go to 160, and we're actually going to go up again. And so, community frequency, that's is 8 here. Let's put it in the bottom, 20, just in the bottom corner. And it's going to be 43, isn't it? We're going to jump quite a lot. So when we get to 160, we're going to go right the way up to 43. So round about here. Okay? Now we're going to add on 11, so we're going to go up to 54. So for 170, we go up to 54, which is about here. And then for 180, we go up to 60, because that was the total number of people in our class. And then what we effectively do is join these lines up in a nice smooth curve. Well, smooth as we can get. Anyway, that's not a particularly smooth curve, but you see what I mean. It should sort of have, it should basically be flatter there and then a peak and then go right up to the top. Basically, the reason we do this is so we can look at it in a certain way and we see how well bunched it is round the middle. So we can easily read off here what the median value is because it's going to be when we're at 30. So we can easily read off that median value. Okay, we can easily read that off. And we can see our median value is going to be roughly 100. So we can see from this that the median equals 148 centimetres, our middle value. There's also two other things we want to look at. Basically, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So, basically, our value at three quarters of the number of students and our value at a quarter of the number of students. So, a quarter is going to be at 15. So, we can look at our lower quartile, that's what we call that. We can read that off from my very dodgy curve. And that's going to be roughly 1, 3, 4. So, the lower quartile... The lower quartile, actually let's write this over here, the lower quartile is going to be 134 centimetres. What about the upper? Okay, well the upper quartile is going to be at 45, and again we just trace it along and we trace it down. And that shows us it can be about 164. Okay, so it's 164 centimetres. And basically it's just the quarter, the three quarters of the number of people, a quarter of the number of people, and our median value in the middle. Okay, and then what we have is we have this other thing called the inter quartile range. And that's just the upper minus the lower. So in this case, 164 minus 134. So it's actually just 30 centimetres. So the difference between the, the top quarter and the bottom quarter is 30 centimetres. It's essentially a sort of range for our data. And basically, there's another way of representing this data. A range I person a, a way of displaying it I personally really don't like and have never ever seen since GCSE. But a way we need to know. About. So we basically it's called a box plot. Okay? And what we essentially a box plot you'd see just on its own, you wouldn't see it with all this stuff around it. 
But basically a box plot shows the interquartile range as a box. So you literally just have something like this. Okay, and you also have the median marked on it as well. So it's purely a way of looking at the full range of the data. So the full range is between 110 and 180. So the full range of the data is between these two lines and is 70 centimetres between 110 and 180. But you can also see that the box in the middle represents our interquartile range. Uh, 134 to 164 and you've also got the median drawn there in just a nice line down the middle. So as a way of representing interquartile range it's a very effective way of showing it. I've just never seen it again after GCSE. It may well come up in your exam though so please please practice the questions on it. Make sure you know what a box plot is and that effectively all it is showing you is that interquartile range and that median value. Okay right well quickly move on to another way of displaying the data, which is called a histogram. Now these are much more useful and you will see these after GCSE, so they are definitely worth learning. So again, we're gonna leave this graph the same. I'm just gonna rub off all the stuff that's on there. And I'm gonna change our values down the side it's not going to be commutative frequency down the side anymore. It's going to be something we call frequency density, which you might have, this pen's dyed. Yeah, so something called frequency density. Okay, and frequency density is purely equal to the frequency divided by something we call a class width. Basically, a histogram looks like a bar chart. And by class width, I just mean how wide the bar is. So for instance, for this one, the bar is gonna be 10 centimeters long. So I'm gonna do eight divided by 10. My frequency density is going to be zero. Point eight. Here it's 20, so 12 divided by 20, so here it's going to be 0 0.6. Okay, 23 divided by 20, so here it's going to be, let's use our calculators, 23 divided by 20 is 1.15 for here. 10 divide, 11 divided by 10, so 1.1 for here and 170 divided by 180, so, sorry, 170 divided by 180 is 10, so 6 divided by, so this can be 0 0.6 here. Okay, so now another reason I rubbed the um, scale off is we need to always make sure we're writing in a scale that makes sense. So at the moment this is in centimetres, so we, we, the top value we're going to go to is 1.15, so we don't want some crazily small thing here. So what I'll do is every 10 centimetres be a 0.2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, So that's 0 0.2. 0 0.4. 0 0.5. Six. I'm sorry, point six, that should be point six. Point eight. One point zero and finally one point two up here. Okay, so now what we can do is draw on our histogram. So between 110 and 120, we go up to 0 0.8. So that's literally all we do. We draw a bar on, it's that wide, and we go up to 0 
between 120 and 140, we go up to 0.6. So that's a lot fatter, but a lot shorter. And between 140 and 160, we go up to 1.15. So 1.1 is going to be here, 1.5 is going to be here. So we go up to here. And that goes all the way along to 160. OK, between 160 and 170, we go up to 1.1. So that's going to be very slightly lower, but it's going to be a lot thinner. And finally, we go up to 0.6 again. OK, so that's a histogram. And what we need to remember is it's the area inside one of these bars that actually tells us what the frequency is. The area tells us the frequency. So if we needed to find the median on here, we'd need to find where the area equals app. So we know it's going to be 30 pupils. So we need to find where the area suddenly comes up to 30. So the area here is going to be 0 0.3 times... Basically, you need to break it up and then use the area to find the median. Basically, histograms are relatively easy. The questions you'll get on histograms won't be too, too difficult. A lot of it will be working backwards to find out what the frequency is and then going from there. So just remember, with a histogram, the frequency equals the area in a bar, not the height of the bar, the area in the bar. That's it, really. We don't really need to talk about anything else to do with statistics. The best thing with histograms, the best thing with community frequency diagrams, the best thing with box, box plots, as always, I'm afraid, is you go away, do some questions on them, and see how you get on. Remember, you've got the worked examples. They're really not that difficult. They look a little bit daunting, but once you've got to grips with them, they'll be a breeze, just like everything else you've done in maths as well.